Hello, my name is Jonas. In this video, I will show you how to create a custom HDR to SDR conversion LUT using Dolby Vision inside DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't seen my introduction video on how to create HDR video, I suggest you watch that first. That tutorial will give you all the information you need to start creating high dynamic range video. So let's begin. A conversion LUT can be nice to have if you want to display HDR video on your SDR monitor or to attach when uploading your video to YouTube. This will give you more control over how the images look when displayed in SDR. Here I have imported my rendered HDR video and added it to the timeline. It is my latest video called Jul Stemning, which was shot at a Christmas market at the old copper mine here in Falun, Sweden. To start, go to the project settings, and in the master settings, make sure to use a resolution for an aspect ratio that matches the video. Since I'm using a 2 to 1 ratio, I set it to 1920 by 960. I seem to get slightly different results in the conversion, with black bars visible around the image. Now, go back to the project settings and color management. When I created this video, I used a color managed workflow, and it's important to not do that here. Just use DaVinci YRGB set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Since we're going to use Dolby Vision for this conversion, we need to enable it. Scroll down and check the Enable Dolby Vision box. Since this video is mastered in 1000 nits, I select the 1000 nit P3 D65 ST2084 option. As you can see, we now have this Dolby Vision tab available. To create the SDR version, make sure that the 100 nit BT709 option is selected, and click Selected to analyze the video. Depending on the length of your video and performance of your computer, this might take a while. Once it's done processing, you can see the automatically created SDR version. Without the Dolby Vision license, you can't access the trim controls. But for this workflow, you can still use the regular tools available in Resolve to apply changes to the image. One problem I can see here is that the image is too saturated. And this is because I graded it in Rec. 709, but it was interpreted as P3 D65 by Dolby Vision. To solve this, I just apply a color space transform and set the output color space to P3 D65. I could also make other changes to the image, but I'm happy with the result. If you want to, you could also render this SDR version as its own video file. Except for setting the desired resolution, the only thing you have to do is to go into the advanced settings and choose tone mapping. Select all vision and the 100 nit option. If you don't select these options, you won't include the conversion made by the Dolby Vision analysis. To generate the conversion LUT, you can't use the simple way of right-clicking the clip thumbnail as you would normally do, because this won't work. Instead, we'll use an older function of Resolve, which analyzes a pattern to know what changes have been made to the image. To do this, you first need to go to the project settings. Click on master settings and make sure the time resolution is set to 1920 by 1080. This has to be done because the pattern used in this process, called trimlut0.dpx, uses this resolution. The fastest way to find the trim LUT 0.dpx file is to go to color management, and from there open your LUT folder. In that folder, you just need to go up one level, and there you will find the trim LUT 0.dpx file. Copy it to your desktop or another folder, import it to the media pool, and add it to the timeline. Now, copy the grade over from your video to the DPX clip. This will also copy the Dolby Vision data, which you can see both by looking at the statistics down here, and also by the test pattern changes when checking and unchecking the Enable Tone Mapping Preview box. Now we're ready to generate the actual LUT. Go back to the color management section in the product settings, and at the bottom you'll find Generate LUT from Analyze Pattern. Choose a name for it and click Generate LUT. This process takes a short while to finish, and when it's done, you can find the LUT in the Resolve LUT folder, which we visited earlier. When Resolve is finished creating a LUT, you might also want to click Update Lists on the lookup tables. Open the LUT folder and you can see the LUT we just created. As a last step, it's good practice to verify that the LUT actually works. 
To do this, add another layer of your video to the timeline. Shorten the clips to where you wish to compare them and apply the LUT to the new clip. When toggling between the clips, you can see that they are very similar and that the LUT actually works. For the video shown in this example, I actually attached the LUT before uploading the video to YouTube. So it's applied to those watching in SDR instead of YouTube's own automatic conversion. In the next video, I will cover how I did that. If you have thoughts or questions, please leave a comment below. Also, remember to like and subscribe for videos. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.